Look at the blackberries. The yeah. chickens love those. My goodness. You can throw some down and they'll go crazy for them. I might just do that. You could also eat them too. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Look at, oh, I got some blackberries for you. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yum. Yum, yum. I've never tried it that way. Yum, yum. They normally, someone will just grab it just, and then run. Really? <laughs> if they can oh, get away. Oh, look at that. Come on. Oh, she's got an underbite. We we got a bunch of hens from a, from like a production laying situation mm -hmm. that were a year old and they had maxed out of that production and they had all had their beaks like cauterized. Oh, it's so sad. Wait, you? Yeah. I'm sorry. I, yeah, you're pretty. <laughs> what, what is this one, the dark colored one? I couldn't tell you. No? We yeah. don't know. probably, I guess, could or should know all the different varieties yeah. we have, but we don't. <laughs> we just, a lot of times we get hens from less than optimal situations or from scenarios where folks, you know, now they're three years old, they don't want them yeah. anymore, and so we trade that. or we buy old ones. Yeah. So it's, in a lot of ways, this whole operation is like a retirement community of yeah. hens, in I, a way. I'm, I'm all for that. I think that's exactly when I get my hen poops, I'm gonna be like taking all the old hens. Yeah, because we still, it's... They still lay eggs. Yeah, yeah. it's like 65-ish hens. Yeah. And we get around three dozen eggs a day two and a half dozen, somewhere in there. 60 hens. 60 hens. Wow. So that's fine. We don't sell eggs. Yeah. Well, I guess we sell a little bit, but mainly we just make sure lots of friends and family <laughs> have all their egg needs met. I love when you throw the blackberries. That's amazing. Yeah. So That's their favorite. So is this some of the stuff that you've just cut back and you're giving the hens now or? Yeah, it's just some perennial kale testing out what uh, whether sea kale, mm -hmm. some of our nursery stuff as the leaves get older, like good King Henry. <laughs> Look at them gobble the blackberries, yeah, it's amazing. Them. It's fun that they eat right out of the hand. We normally just throw yeah, stuff. Never... Oh yeah, <laughs> I think I'm so used to like living with a chicken that, <laughs> that uh, she, she got to the point that she was, she almost required to be hand fed. Oh wow. <laughs> they get really spoiled very quickly. Yeah. Ours are not that way so much. No, it's it's a better it's better to be this way. <laughs> well it's all just different ways of relating. Yeah. I, I think we kind of ride the line a little between ch chickens for production and mm -hmm. for homestead needs and trying to have pets that we care about a lot yeah. and we kind of it lives on both sides of that somehow I, I think would you say that or do you name them or you haven't gotten there yet we one of them special there. best friend but I haven't for the most part maybe I don't it's think that we'll one get there. yeah because you don't have, and you don't have a favorite we do eat them yeah so we love them and we eat them yeah we need to sort of occupy a middle space with yeah them. yeah naming is that is that the, the line has Although to be drawn We've eaten some that we've named. Yeah. So. Oh, really? Big Red. <laughs> okay. Kind Sir. Or no. Frankie Five Toes. They were all stew. Oh, no. So it works. Roosters. <laughs> but it, I think having love and really caring for them doesn't preclude eating them someday. Yeah. I think in some ways it makes, the really, it, it makes that reality more real and more honest mm. somehow rather than like, I don't want to know you too yeah. much. When I had picked up Kippy, who was, you know, a stray essentially, somebody got her during Easter and probably tossed her out. So it was like kind of like a, a goof gift, you know, that type of thing. And so I ended up um, taking her with the idea of fostering her. And then when she got old enough to lay eggs, we saved three of them. And because I had a friend over uh, and we prepared the, the, the her first three eggs. And I was like, this feels a little weird. But then our friend said, no, it's weird not knowing where your food comes from. <laughs> it's yeah. like so true, you know? Yeah. 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 We, I think yeah, for the most the part. The more you see, the more you want to like be up close yeah. and have more of your own say in what's happening. Absolutely. Something can say one thing and if you go see the reality, you don't what want to have any part of it. What it is, or there's, <laughs> very a, there's a very large space. 
Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about your, your chicken operation, because I know you try to be as sufficient as possible, and it looks like they are eating a lot of what you produce here. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, they, we, we supplement with what we produce here. We're, stri- we're trying over time, like this year we're growing a field of sunflower and millet mm-hmm. that we hope to be able to harvest. Yeah, we're hoping to move over time more and more to grain that we grow for them. But we, we buy in sunflower and millet seed. We trade with the local mill for whole seed. That, that we soak every day and get them soaked grain. So it's like a little bit more like ferment? Yeah, it's fermented. fermented. It kind of goes further that way. And yeah. It's better for them. Well, in, in my mind, most importantly, that whole seed, it it sprouts. Yeah. And so then part of the whole picture is this composting scene, which is raw food scraps that come in from all sorts of various sources. Oh, I see some of this sprouting right here. Yeah. Yeah, so that's compost that's about, that would be about 15 days old mm-hmm. from food scraps and you still have the, the Menard in your hand. That's good, uh, that's yeah. fun. Um, <laughs> it's so soft, it's like a kitty. It's so, they're so sweet. <laughs> this this Menarda is so soft. But so yeah, we use sawdust, that same sawdust from the walkways mm-hmm. we use to bulk out our compost and absorb the excess nutrient from the food scraps that are coming in Mm -hmm. and then as so each day when Sasha soaks the seed and pours it out it goes on the compost the heat tell me about it it sprouts and then we basically like go from the raw food scrap mix it with carbon and tumble it down through you know each day we try to pile up the material and so this is like maybe 10 to 12 days in, it looks like this. Yeah. Oh, it looks so great, though. Like, look, it's just so darkened. And then it moves down. Yeah. We have a whole other little pipeline, and then we sift it. And it can go from basically raw food scraps to a compost that's it's good enough as a mulch in mm-hmm. the garden in about 30 days. So it's not finished. It's not aged. Yeah. It's not perfectly balanced. There's all sorts of funky little issues here or there. But... So they basically are the, the shredders and the turners. We pile it, they turn it <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. They're so good at kick, kicking and pecking. They undo and any pile. Shoes. <laughs> They'll like take a mountain apart if they could have access to it. I love how curious they are. They're like, I think you have food in your hand. I'm like, I don't have food in my hand. <laughs> so we have a lot of hens for a small space. Yeah. But there's almost no, there's almost no strife or they peck on each other a little bit. There's hierarchy a little bit, mm-hmm. but by and large, they're really gentle to each other. And I think it's because there's so much going on. And so there's always some new area to kick and explore or there's yeah. new food coming in. And so it, it helps us get this amazing product, but I think it also gives them a quality of life that we feel really good about. Well, I they- think they go to bed each night like, like it was a full day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it's good. I mean, they, they have so many little actually nooks and crannies that they could go in and they do get bored after a while. I mean, in the winter months, they, you know, oftentimes mm-hmm. they tell they you get, get bored some... in like 10 minutes. Yeah. They like the new everything. Yeah. They yeah. like, they I mean, like as soon activity. as you turn something over, they're yeah. like, what, what do you got there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're very curious. And... You turn another spot and they, this spot's boring. They yeah. go to the new spot. <laughs> Um, what I found from just having hens for a good portion of my life is that it's not even just hierarchies. They have alliances, you know what I mean? Where mm-hmm. they come together and, cause we have some, like the top hen and you know, the top hen is nice to the bottom hen, but the third hen likes the top hen, but doesn't like this hen, you know? And it's like, yeah. it's like mean girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we find the, the, the crews that came in together a lot of times are in orbit with one another. Right. But I think when there's enough there's enough hens and there are enough spaces in here that's kind of hard to track the details. Yeah. We just get a rough head count periodically and cross our fingers that everything's going well. But it seems we, it feels like from a zoomed out place, we can sense whether or not we're doing things right by how much, if we hear like angry or frustrated sounds mm-hmm. from them, or if we see more pecking, then mm-hmm. we know we need more raw food scraps. We need more things happening. A mm-hmm. lot of time that correlates with us taking a break from turning as much. Yeah. They start to get a little antsy and a little negative to each other. And it 
all goes away the moment we start adding in that that newness and that raw material. So with the seed that you are fermenting, do, is this something, one of the things that you barter? Some of them, okay. a lot of them. Or do you purchase them? The wheat is, so it's a local mill yeah. that we do a trade with them to mm -hmm. get, basically, as they mill their material, they sift off okay. different sizes or weed seeds or broken seed. And so some good seed comes through. Sometimes it's like brassicas or corn. It's all sorts of yeah. different things. And so we, that's the bulk of what we soak. And there's enough real seed in there that with the moisture and we can feel the warmth of it it's too. It's very nice and it smells great. I this mean, is only 10, 15 it. days in. Wow. And it's, we've learned to not fool ourselves and say, well, we can put it in the garden and seed it out and it'll grow things. Yeah. But as a mulch, it's wonderful. It can leach the excess nutrient and then next year, yeah. it's ready for whatever we want to do with it. But okay, we get around so 10 or 15 wheelbarrow loads of this a week. Maybe 10. Fantastic. What do you use for calcium supplements for them? The oyster shells? You give them the oyster shell, okay. but we also trade with a friend who has dairy cows. For okay. like... Is that the yogurt that I saw out there? They mm -hmm. like yogurt. Like, they, they love, love it. it. Yeah. Old milk is just about old milk and fresh fruit. <laughs> they flip for it. Yeah. So that's free choice for them. Wow. That seems to be I really... I saw a couple of them already. They love know, that. Yeah, dipping their, they go crazy. dipping their beaks in it. Yeah, it's Yeah, great. you know, we buy in the granite chunks. So it's not like we're doing everything yeah. abnormal or whatever you want to say. But Do you ever feed them their eggshells back? Yeah. yeah. Every last one. All okay. the eggshells. Yeah. Because I, I, from my own limited experience with the chickens, they never really like the oyster shells. They don't. Yeah, and yeah. they love their egg shells and getting yep. them enough calcium and yep. everything is yeah. one of those things, yeah. It feels like we could probably boost their calcium even more. Sometimes, Sometimes. the shells feel a little thin. I, yeah. I agree, you know, and especially if they're very productive. Um, it ebbs and flows, really, sometimes. Yeah. And it totally is dependent on where they are in the hierarchy, I mm. think. Like, yep. somebody's getting more and somebody's getting less, yeah. no matter how much is available. That's you how seem to be an independent hen. <laughs> the barred rocks, I mean, they're all wonderful, but they, they're they really mild, but they also are, like, very inquisitive. They, yeah. You know, some of the first ones to come in. Who's they're the, they're the great worm hen? cutters. Do you know? I don't think we have one. We don't have a lead hen. I don't, maybe we do, but if if we do, <laughs> she's hen? subtle about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think there's just too many. There are definitely some who are more towards the bottom and there are yeah. some who are more towards the top, but whether there's oh. like, there's probably one What's ultimate on? oh, furthest down. Look at that, he already sees, she sees it. <laughs> Luckily, we have almost no, we had one hawk attack in all the years, but I think having so much structural complexity and big trees yeah. overhead and so many wild birds around, yeah. it's become basically a non-issue. Yeah. But we do have raccoons and skunks and opossums that come at night, but we, I feed them and yeah. they don't try to get into the coop yeah. as long as no chickens left out. Right? Yeah, well, that's always an important thing. Sasha gives them their, their nightly offering of bananas <laughs> and eggs. And they, they eat come great. and they eat every last day. They yeah. peel the bananas. They peel the bananas, they, they eat all it. the eggs. You have a little wash, hand washing station. <laughs> yeah. Raccoons are like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we set up a game cam once and we saw both raccoons and opossums. And they, they leave they leave the shells yeah. and they leave the peels. Oh my goodness. And they have a yeah. little portal, they come in and out and that's yep. that's the agreement. Yep. <laughs> I sometimes get, I'm like, why are we, you know, why are we buying banana? But it's it's really sweet and it- <laughs> They think, love bananas more than anything. And a lot of times at the grocery store, you can get like a big bag of like old bananas for a dollar. So. It's they like, like them right. It's, it's like our equivalent <laughs> to like a, a monkey or a lemur. <laughs> yeah. The, the raccoon. And they leave us, they leave our hens alone yeah. because of that exchange. I think they can, it feels they like they feel it. They would eat a hen if there was a hen out to eat. Yeah. But if it's at night and they're all in the coop, then they, they just eat the bananas and eggs. Yeah. Yeah, it's sweet. And then what's what's this garden? Is this all for your chickens or? Yeah, well, it's a dry moment, so you don't get to see it in its full, <laughs> glory is not the word, but <laughs> the fullness of what it is. But basically, it's a hole that I dug. Yeah. And there's a tube that runs from 
the gutters from the north side of the house mm -hmm. that sends right into here. And so in the spring and fall, this is filled with water out. This mesh is here to keep the hens from eating. This is a, a perennial water celery hmm. that they really like. Oh, wow. And it's also a very aggressive, non-native plant. Yeah. So they eat everything that gets, you can see, like they yeah. browse it down. <laughs> and what the water celery does is it's so nutrient hungry that it takes water. Basically, a pond in the middle of a static chicken yard should be the grossest thing ever. Yeah. But it filters all the water by turning itself, turning the water into itself. Mm -hmm. And so we just throw them out, and then the hens eat it as they want it. Oh, that's, so that's great. So you don't, you, you only use it for the hens, basically, for like for for eating. Yeah, we wouldn't. I mean, yeah. I guess if we needed to, we could bring it inside and wash and eat yeah. it. But we've got lots of other foods. Yeah. So it's basically. It's a water filtering, water cooling, nutrient swapping plant for Fantastic. the hens. I and didn't think it would be this aggressive. <laughs> so it's helpful that well, the, the hens good, like it. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. The hens will mow it down if, yeah. uh, for you. We're thinking then, about offering it through the nursery, but that's one of those plants we want to be careful with and know about before we do. And you mentioned amaranth. I see some, again, growing uh, behind you. Do, you. do you give the chickens amaranth at all? Like, will they eat it? Yeah, they, I think this time of year, they're less psyched on it. Mm -hmm. But when the seeds are ripe, they like it. But the, the, pretty much every amaranth you've seen here has, is all volunteers. They just pop up. This motherwort? Yeah. Oh, nice. That's one they don't eat. Yeah. And I know you like it, so I don't pull it. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, I don't know. Why don't yeah. you throw off some of those berries again? <laughs> they, yeah, they love the elderberries. <laughs> they can be a little bit picky, and that's fine. It's nice that they are. They absolutely are. They have their preferences, that's for sure. They like the elder. Oh, you can my just, goodness. I just tap the stems, and then it rains yeah. down some medicine for them. And they, they Do you scoop. mind if I, like, shake it a little bit? That's fine. Yeah, that's, that's mainly what that one's there for. Look, it's raining elders. Well, let me just... We harvested a bunch for us, but there's... We grow so many elder plants, and really, like, the fruit from one elder is all we actually need for oh, what yeah. we want to do. I, I love looking how interested they are in these elders because it just brings me such joy when they, when they have something that they love. <laughs> yeah. I think it's like a low-dose thing for them. The, I think it feels like we can trust that we can offer them a really wide range of things yeah. and they'll decide what's the right amount. Chickens whether, are good at self-regulating. They're smart. Yeah. As long as it's not all blended together and as long as they're not desperate, yeah. you know, like there's lots of things available, then they can choose what is the right thing for them in a given moment. Yeah. You got an elder stuck to your clothes. Oh, I do. <laughs> it's going with you. That's good. <laughs> here, I want to... Which one, which one of you wants it? Oh, here, here. There you go. There you go. Good girl. 